Okay, so we're going to have a look at elliptic curve integrated encryption scheme. So elliptic curve is often used when we need a key exchange. Uh, we use the elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman method, and we also do it to sign uh, with our something with our public with our private key, and then prove it with our public key. But we can also use uh, the method to be able to encrypt data. Okay, so this is uh, some of the basics around elliptic curve encryption. What we have is a point on an elliptic curve, G, and then we create a private key, a random uh, number. This is our private key here, and this is a random number. This random number is the, the gradient of the line that we project from G up until we find our public key, which is an X, Y point on the curve. You see here we have an X and we have an, a Y, but our private key is just a, a scalar value. So the equation that we have is that the public key, we'll call it Q, is equal to the private key times G. And it's extremely difficult if we use large uh, large integers to find the value of p, even though we have the value of q and g. Okay, so this is how uh, elliptic key encryption works. We have certain standard curves that we use that are seen to be safe. So the way that ECIES works is that we generate a symmetric key from uh, the public key of the person that we're sending uh, the data to. So it differs from our key exchange method where the same key would be generated on the other side. In this way, if Alice wants to send to, sorry, if Bob wants to send to Alice, Alice will send her public key. Bob will generate a symmetric key based on that, send some values back and then uh, only Alice will be able to decrypt the message. But the key thing here is that we're using a symmetric key method in the end, because it would be very difficult for us to use uh, public key encryption to be able to do the main encryption. Okay, so we're generating a, a key. In this case, the key is called S, and S will be used to encrypt the, a message with such as ASA, AES encryption, and then on the other side, Alice will be able to derive the same key to be able to decrypt the message. Okay, so Bob is going to send to Alice, so uh, Alice generates her private key, that's that random number, and then multiplies, we have a G value, multiplies this private key by the G value to get the points QA, which is our public key. She then passes that on to Bob, and Bob generates a random number. First he calculates R, which is the random number times G, and then he calculates S, which is the random number times the uh, Alice's public key. Okay, So he now has two values, S and R. So he passes R to uh, Alice, probably at the same time as he's passing the keys. He then takes the message and then encrypts it with a symmetric key algorithm, as I said, such as AES, to get the ciphertext. So he passes the ciphertext along to Alice and passes along the S value that he calculated here. Alice then takes her private... Uh, sorry, t uh, sorry, she doesn't... Bob doesn't send the S value, he sends the R value with the ciphertext. So with the R value, uh, Alice can re-compute the value of S by taking her private key and then multiplying it by R. And we can prove this by, by this, R is equal to R times G, so that's equal to R times DA times G, and that's the same as the value that uh, Bob used for the encryption key. 
So Alice will now know what the S value is and use that as the decryption key for the ciphertext and she should be able to get the message back again. Okay, so in this case we're generating our, our keys uh, on the, to be able to encrypt the, the, the text. Okay, so here's the code that we're going to use. Uh, so there's the we're making the key pair with with a elliptic curve. We'll take a random number. It's just a static one in this case. We then create a scalar, which is multiplying a point by a, an integer value. So we get r and s. So that's equal to r times g, and r times the public key of Alice. So in this way, we're taking a, a value r and multiplying it by a point to get a point back. So r and s will be points on the elliptic curve. We then derive s as the x value of the s value that we've calculated. We'll then use AES encryption with this uh, value that we've calculated, this s value, taking only the x coordinate, encrypt it, and then we decrypt it back with the same key. And then, okay, so here's a, a sample run with the private key. There's the public key with an x, x, y value. So that's Alice's. Uh, we'll then generate our R and S values. There they are there. R and S. We pass the value of R and then Alice is able to calculate the encryption key taking the X value of S. And there's the encrypted cipher for hello and then decrypted. So we'll just have a look at this here. Okay, so we'll take a message here. And there we go, there's the private key, the public key. There is the value of S. And we can see that we could decrypt it here. Okay, so there's the there's the full code that we're using. This includes the elliptic curve code. And there's the AES ciphering that we're using. And there's the scale and multiply. We take a point and we multiply it by a value. Uh, but there's our, our core code there. Okay, so in this way we can use uh, encryption methods such as AES. Uh, so we can also use lightweight cryptography because we just need to generate our key. It could be 128 bits or 256 bits we can generate a, a key which will uh, work with our symmetric key uh, cipher. So in this case we're using a lightweight cryptography method called Rabbit, which is a stream encryption method, much faster than AES. And if you're interested, the code is actually uh, here for, for Rabbit. Okay, so that's how we can encrypt with uh, elliptic curve integrated encryption.